Warning, this story contains heavy themes of blood, gore, suicide, sexual assault, self-harm, and yandere themes. This story also contains spoiler for manga and anime. Listener's discretion is advised. The first thing that came back was scent. Iron. A sharp, metallic tang that sliced through the haze of darkness, enveloping our mind both intoxicating and horrifyingly familiar. It clawed at her instincts, awakening a hunger she thought she can control, a primal call that were stained deep within her. Next was sight, her vision still blurry, eyes struggling to adjust. All she could see was red, as if she had donned colorless glasses. Everything around her, was blurred in a deep, dark crimson. The walls paused with it. The floor glistened like a nightmarish canvas. And each breath she took felt heavy in the weight of something unspeakable. Panic surged within her, raising like a bale in her throat. The thought tore through her, a desperate plead riching in her mind, but denial twisted in her gut wrapping around her heart like a vase. No, 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 no. She stared forwards, limbs heavily and unsteady, and as the fog began to fill it, the horror of reality crushed under her like an unforgiving wave. She blinked rapidly, trying to clear the red from her eyes, trying to will away the overwhelming sense of dread that gawked at her. In the inside. But with each heartbeat, the truth seeped deeper, flowing her thoughts with guilt and despair, and no matter how much she blinked, the dark red remained as it soaked deeply into all her surroundings. In fabric rushed, she dropped to her knees, trembling hands, scratch- searching for him, feeling the coldness of the ground beneath her fingertips. <laughs> Please, no. She gasped, a sob clawing its way up from her chest. The charm he had made for her, Lady Edmund shattered pieces of him. His embrace like shards of a shattered dream. His laugh echoed in her mind. A haunting melody now tingled with a sorrow and cruel reminder of what had just inspired. Don't, please, not this, she muttered, voice trembling as she reached out for him. Each touch felt like a knife twisting deeper into her heart. Maybe if I could just... Trembling hands shifted through the meaty chunks, grabbing anything whole. Her vision blurred and mine hazy. She held the parts she found together, hoping that with each miracle they would merge. As she gathered more pieces, desperately trying to put him back together, her fingers shook with the weight of what she had just done. Atop the puddle of blood, A little limb peeked out from the mess, ignoring the mass of teeth ached into its soft skin. She gathered it with the rest of the parts she could find. Every movement was laced with fabric urgency, but nothing could ease the truth. The boy who had called her ugly, the boy who had offered her warmth and compassion, was gone, swallowed by the darkness that lied beneath her skin. As she passed her hands to the ground, trying to mold the earth around her to form him anew, she felt a warmth of life and boring away, lost to the crimson haze that consumed her. I, I can fix this. I'll make it right, she cried, but her words were narrow, aching in a void where hope once thrived. It was almost complete. That's all what's missing was the head, his head, and... It was right there in the middle of it all, the only part left untouched. Despite the wisteria, it was the only thing she couldn't reach for. Even with her mind clouded, her eyes landed on everything else. Her subconsciousness was too afraid to look. And when she did, it was all as if the blood on the floor was hers, and she was the one torn apart, her heart bleeding and aching so hard that she couldn't help but collapse into a heap on the floor. Just a few minutes ago, the face that was smiling so brightly, so full of excitement, was now frozen. 
eyes wide with fear and mouth open in a silent scream. That fear was of her. Each heartbeat felt like a funeral demeanor, mourning the bond they had forged in the face of unimaginable darkness. But in that moment of despair, the truth pierced her like a blade. She was a monster, a creature sharpened by a curse she could not escape from, and f more the clawed remains of her m humanity, the deeper she fell into the abyss. And as she felt among the shattered pieces of what was left, the blood on her hands felt like a final chain biting her to the demon she had tried so hard to outrun, a haunting reminder of a piece of her existence. Amidst her sobs, the door of the little cottage slowly creaked open. In the doorway stood her mentor, eyes wide in disbelief. That stare pierced her hesitantly, and Yin felt like the last of her resolve crumpled. I... I, I couldn't. I didn't mean it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> a scream, raw and primal, erupted from her core, reverberating through the air like a mouthful veil of a lost spirit. It was a sound seeped into a bitter scamper of regret, echoing through the silence of the night, each note laced with a haunting realization that any moment of blind desperation... She had exchanged her own one flicker of hope. The horror in her mentor's eyes pierced through her, an unbearable reflection of the guilt that consumed her. The silence that came after hung thick between them, an unspoken insumptuation that twisted her insides. She could see the, her mentor's disbelief mourning into anguish, their expression a painful mirror of her own shattered heart. In that moment, she felt as though she was unraveling, each thread of her sanity frailing as memories of the boy swung through her mind, his small, trusting smile, the warmth of his laughter now forever silent. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She cried, the desperation in her voice rising like a tide, and with a sudden surge of panic, she dashed towards the charm he had crafted for her, grasping it tightly in her hand. It felt warm, a precious token of innocence and light that she desperately needed to hold on to, something to cling as the darkness spread. Without another word, she turned and fled the house, the door slamming behind her like a final punctuation in her broken exterior. Outside, the night air was cold and biting, but she could barely feel it as she ran, the world around her blurring in a haze of shadow and lost memories. Each heartbreak was a reminder of the life she had taken, the bond she had so carelessly shattered. She found herself standing at the edge of a cliff, overlooking the vast expansion of darkness that lay beneath her. The jagged rocks below mirrored the turmoil within, a glimpse of desire that echoed to her own. As dawn approached, the horizon began to glow, soft and inviting, yet she felt none of its warmth. Instead, it seemed to promise an end, an escape to her torment that gawked at her soul. The sun would rise, and with it, the cleanliness fire that could rid the world of the monster she become. There was a haunting beauty in that thought, a fealty that beckoned her like a siren's call, offering solace and surrender. I'm sorry, she whispered again her voice barely more than a breath, not knowing who she was apologizing to, perhaps to the boy whose laughter had once filled her heart, or to the mentor whose love still lingered like a fragile thread, binding them together even in the face of such terror. She clenched the ch charm tightly, its colors vibrant against her skin, a small reminder of the love she had failed to protect, in those final moments, she felt strange calm wash over her. A surrender to the in invaluable thoughts swirled through her mind. Regret, loss, laughter. The dreams extinguished was soon, too soon. In the first rays of sunlight breaking over the horizon, she closed her eyes, feeling the warmth brush against her skin. But as the sun ascended, its light swirled over the cliff like a cascade of molten gold, an unbearable pain enlightening within her. It began as a faint tickle at the edges of her con consciousness, a gentle warmth that quickly enveloped into a 
a seething blaze. The warmth that had once felt inviting now became a reckless fire, consuming her from the inside out. She gasped, her breath hitching in her throat, as a light pressed against her, each ray piercing her flesh like sh sharp pieces of glass. The horror of her choices burned alongside the heat, twisting in her gut like a cruel reminder of what she had lost. She fell to her knees, the charm slipping from her fingers and clattering to with the ground, its vibrant colors fading in the harsh light, her vision blurred, and the world around her melting into a chaotic swirl of red and gold, and she clutched her head, fighting against the unchantering flames, once, oh, every once in it being screamed in agony, but even amidst the torment, the strange clarified suicide and anticipation of her fate. As the sun's rays enveloped her completely, she felt herself beginning to unravel, darkness within her finally succumbing to the dawn's reckless embrace. As consciousness slipped away, the world dissolved into a haze of golden light and blinding pain. Her vision flickered like a dying flame, shadows wrapping and twisting as she sank deeper into the darkness that beckoned her. The seething rays of the sun pressed recklessly against her, forcing her eyes shut against the unforgiving brilliance. In that moment, reality faded, and all she could feel was the overwhelming tide of agony and the weight of despair dragging her down. But just as the last fancy of her weaknesses began to slip through her fingers, a figure emerged from the void. A silhouette framed by an ethereal glow. Just to let you know you're not dead, the story is still going on. Yay, I guess. I don't know how you want to put that, but yay. Anyways, I love you all so much. Bye-bye.